Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at how to take an armature inside a one mesh uh, model, which is going to be my dancing can, and basically attach it, and so the armature makes the can move and you can animate it. So, here we go. First thing, I'm going to take my can here, I'm going to go into edit mode, and since I'm going to want the can to bend, I need a whole bunch of loop cuts going around here so that it's easy to bend. If you don't have spots where the mesh can bend, then uh, it doesn't bend. So let's basically go here. Let's go to loop, cut, and slide. You'll see my purple line there. I'll roll the mouse wheel. For now, I'll just do this. Now, there are some modifiers you could do that would do this instead, but this is just easier for now. I'll click, click. That's not bad. Okay, lots of vertices, lots of breakpoints to bend. All right, let's go back in the tab. Now what I have to do is I have to add an armature. I'm going to hit 5 on the numpad to go to ortho view, just so it looks a little better. I'm going to put the 3D cursor there, and I'm going to add my armature. Armature, single bone. There's my first bone. I'm going to hit S to scale it. S and a scaling. I'm going to go into edit mode. S select the tail there. Hit E. Extrude it up. I'll hit E, extrude again, so I have three bones. If you want to put four, you can put four. And there we go. There's my armature. Now, I'm not going to bother naming them okay, or doing anything like that. Um, is it inside? No, it's not inside. So let's pull that inside, but before I do, I'll just do my data tab of the armature, and I'll turn it on to X-ray okay, so I can see it once it goes in. So let's go to object mode. Let's bring this in. I'm just going to go for ballpark here. Let's go for bird's eye view. I guess I could go Alt G. Alt G just puts it right to the center. That's pretty good. Move it up a little. Nice. Okay. Now let's attach it. Now the attaching actually is so easy uh, compared to some of my other videos where I've attached parts or different objects to different bones. This is just one mesh, right? That looks like that. I just want this one mesh to get attached to the armature. Now, this is actually done with a modifier, and the modifier is called Deform Armature. But when you use this one, I'm going to go backwards after this, but when you use this one, vertex groups, you got to assign vertex groups. Now, if you don't know what vertex groups are, I'm going to show you in a minute. So let's kill this. If you put that, don't put it. Let's let the program do everything. It's going to attach the modifier and make the vertex groups and assign them to the bones so it's all good. So here we go. Right click the model, hold the shift key, right click the armature, and now do control P to parent it. Make sure the armature is the second thing you select, right? That's the thing that gets to become the parent. Control P and your options here. If you're going to a single bone, you'd probably pick bone. But what I want to do now is I really want to do the armature deform modifier, and I'm going to choose automatic weights, and I'll tell you what that does after it's done. So let's just do it. Okay, that's done. Let's see the result. I right-click the armature. Now I can go into pose mode, and if I choose to rotate some bones, you'll see it's deforming, right? So you can see if this was an arm or a body and stuff and you did it properly. Not too bad, right? Pretty fast process. AA to select all, and I'll just clear that out, put it back to its rest pose. Now, let me tell you what that did, okay? When you did that little control P, armature, automatic weighting, whatever, modifier, here's what it did. It took your model, it looked at it, sort of in edit mode, and it looked at all the vertices, the dots, and it looked at the bones that were nearby, and it assigned these vertices into groups. So maybe this top group around there was assigned to the top bone. So it has to try to follow the top bone. And then it took a bunch of vertices here in the middle, and it has to follow the middle bone. And a bunch of vertices at the bottom follow the bottom bone. Now these are called vertex groups. Let's take a peek at what they were. So if you have your can selected, you can go to the data tab, and you can see here in the data tab 
there's vertex groups and it's made bone bone one bone two it names them after the bones now since I left my bones named bone one bone bone two that's what it's named the vertex groups if you're actually in edit mode you can see what groups so let's hit a to select nothing select the bone group and go select it shows you what it considers so those vertices are trying to follow bone this bottom bone yeah it does go a little high up let's deselect bone one select those ones that's that vertex group now you're free to remove or assign new vertices if you know how to do that you can look at a video if you really care but for beginners this isn't bad deselect and bone two is controlling those now you'll notice there's overlap the overlap is okay okay to give you actually a neat idea you can actually go to <clears throat> weight paint mode of your can and it'll actually show you depending what bone you have it sort of shows you the weighting so even though the vertex group actually went quite past the bone you can see the color the weighting of it decreases down to cold nothing okay where it's red it has a lot of control so it's supposed to be smooth you can actually paint if you want you know and change this right if you're really you know advanced kind of stuff okay let's go back to object mode now that's basically it that was done and to the can it added a modifier and the modifier it added was the armature deform modifier it selected what armature to use well that's the object was armature the only armature in our world and it said bind to vertex groups so it uses the vertex groups to help control the motion and that's really it for now you can check preserve volume that's just things like if you're bending an arm you may not want the arm to get thinner or thicker magically uh, you can experiment with that right tick it on off see what it does but that's basically it if you wanted to start keyframing some motion now really quickly here I could select the entire armature I could hit I let's do the location rotation I could move forward in time I could take this one rotate it this way this one rotate it that way select all hit I location rotation go forward in time let's rotate that one back let's rotate that one back let's select all of them hit I location rotation it's plunking down my keyframes so it's just like anything else the armature is the thing you're keyframing and the object with the deform modifier follows it and that's really it now this is keyframing the timeline you should watch one of my videos that shows you keyframing with the uh, action editor or the action strips and the NLA editor right it's a bit more useful anyways that's the armature deform modifier for when you have a skeleton with one single object mesh.